Hey, what's up guys? Nick White here. I do tech and coding stuff on Twitch and YouTube. Check the description for all my information. We do all the leak code. We do all the hacker rank and stuff like that. Uh, just explaining algorithms here. So this problem is called global and local inversions. It's one of the easier medium problems I've come across. Number 775. Uh, a lot. We got some likes here. So we have a permutation of A. We have a, an array where there's numbers from zero to the length of the array, minus one, right? So all the numbers in an array size five would be from zero to four, right? So it's just an integer array. Uh, we're gonna be given a permutation of that array. So it's like mixed up numbers, right? So this is an array from you know zero to five, uh, so it's length six, so for numbers zero to five, but they're mixed up. So that's what we're gonna be getting. That's what kind of input we're gonna be getting. So an array of size three is gonna have you know, one, zero, two. It's just a mix up version. Okay, then it gives us the definition of global and local inversions. So it defines a global inversion as a number where i is less than j index wise. So these are indexes. So zero is less than one or, you know, zero is less than, you know, four or whatever index wise or three index wise. Um, so the index is less than i, index i is less than j and index at the element at index i is greater than the element at index j. So a global inversion is like this index is less than this index, but because i is less than j, this index i is less than index j, but the element here is greater. This index is less than this index, but the element here is greater. So that's a global inversion. Also, elements next to each other would be a global inversion, right? Two, i is less than index j, This, but two is greater than zero, right? That's a global inversion too. So in the element to the left of the element to the right, if it's greater, it's a global inversion, or if it's just greater than elements later on in the array, that's a global inversion. A local inversion is only elements next to each other. So a local inversion is where i is less than i plus one, or in index wise, right? So, but the array of i is greater than i a of i plus one. So local inversion is just things next to each other where like two is greater than zero or five is greater than three. Um, but it is not where, you know, two is greater than, or like five is greater than four. It doesn't go beyond the element next to each other. So what we can look at, if we look at these definitions, all local inversions, because these are the, this is the, a sub, this is like a subcategory of global inversions, right? So all, all local inversions are global inversions. So in this method, we want to return true if the number of glo global inversions is equal to the number of local inversions. So what we're going to do is we're just going to disprove that by finding a global inversion that isn't a local inversion. So local inversions are elements next to each other, like two is greater than zero is a global and a local inversion. But if we just want to find a, we want to find a global inversion where this isn't a local inversion, right? Where one is greater than zero, but this is a global inversion, but it's not a local inversion. So that's going to, as soon as we find one global inversion that is not a local inversion, like one is greater than zero. So an element that is greater than an element more than one spot away, that means that we're going to return false. So we just want to try and disprove this. So basically, we're just going to keep a max. We're going to set it to negative one. We're just going to loop through. We're going to loop through to a dot length minus two because we're going to be checking two elements ahead. We're going to be doing this basic loop through and we're just going to be calculating the max at each time. We're going to say max is equal to max, math dot max of a of i and max. So the current max and a of i. And then we're just going to say, okay, if max is greater than a of i plus two, two elements away, then we will return false. And we'll do a walkthrough of this code in a second. And if we make it through without disproving it, we're gonna return true. So the whole point here is to pr find a global inversion that is not a local inversion. And I wrote out, trace the code and everything. So what we're gonna do is if we're looking at this code, max is negative one, right? We're gonna be, we have this input array right here, one, two, zero. We're gonna say, okay, i is zero, right? We're gonna start the loop. And we're gonna say, okay, so i i is less than one, uh, length minus two. Length is three, minus two is one. So i is less than one, we're fine. We're looping through, right? Max is equal to math.max of negative one is the current max, and a of i, the first element, is one. So you look at the max of those, max becomes one. If one is greater than a of i plus two, if one is greater than zero, 
we return false because it's not true because we found a global inversion. We found in this case, one is greater than an element farther away than just one space. This is greater than zero. That is not a local inversion. So the different there's all local inversions are global inversions, but not all global versions are uh, local inversions. So we found a global version that isn't a local inversion. So the numbers aren't the same. We return false. If you make it through the whole thing, that means it's either only local inversions or there's no inversions at all. Um, so, you know, that's pretty much it. Why do we do A of I plus two? Because we have to find a global inversion that isn't a local inversion has to be at least one space away. And why do we have this maximum? Because we update the max because the maximum number we're look uh, an inversion is when the element at an index is greater than an element at a later index. So we keep the max because the max has the most likelihood of being greater than an element, you know, a space away or something like that, right? So if you just keep updating this max, right, it's gonna be the greatest element as we move forward so that we can find that global inversion. We're not gonna be missing out on anything that we passed already because we have the maximum element as we loop through. That's pretty much it. Uh, I think this is a pretty basic problem. Let me know if you guys have any questions. It's pretty straightforward. I basically just learned this from this. This is like a great solution. I think it was this guy's. I mean, this guy just explains it right here perfectly. So check out this. Uh, I'll link this in the description. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Really easy medium one compared to some of the easy ones are as hard as this. Thanks for watching. Uh, like and subscribe so I can promote my channel and all that stuff. And um, yeah. See you in the next video. All right. Peace.